Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's video. So guys, I hope all of you know we have already launched the live courses of RBS Abhiyan Abhiyan. You can check it out on our website. You can check it out on our mobile application. And one more thing that the crash course for the NABAD examination have already been launched. So if you want to know more about the courses, you can visit the website or you can know more about it on our application. Now here we are on the first question. So let's begin the question. I hope all of you have the PDF with you. Okay, so you can download the PDF from the Telegram channel and the link is in description below. So let's begin. Uh, which state celebrates Bonalu festival? So here the right answer is Telangana. Telangana celebrates this festival. Now guys, this is basically a Hindu traditional festival celebrated to venerate Goddess Mahakal. So there is nothing much that you need to remember here. Just remember that it is observed annually as well as uh, here is a uh, fact that the twin cities of Hyderabad and Secunderabad celebrate this festival with a great fervor. And apart from these two cities, other parts of the state also celebrate this festival. But since Hyderabad and Secunderabad are known by the name of twin cities, therefore it is important for you to know which cities are called twin cities of Telangana. Okay, so that is all about this news. So the next question is who heads the Centers Committee on Minimum Support Price and Natural Farming? Here Sanjay Agarwal is the right. Now you all know that uh, the farmers had protested and in order to end their protest, not only the farm laws were repealed, but central government had also promised to create a committee which would work on strengthening the MSP and the center had also intended to bring the natural farming onto the ground. So that is all now. Now the government has formed that panel which is going to be chaired by Sanjay Agarwal. Now remember Sanjay Agarwal was the former agricultural secretary. Okay, and this panel is going to have three members from the Sayyid Kisan Morcha, which is the organization uh, who was spearheading this farmer protest. Okay, so three members of the organization are going to be there. Do remember the number of members from this organization. The next question is, where was the Swavalamban seminar organized? So here, New Delhi is the right now, guys, this naval innovation and indigenization organization, along with Society of Indian Defense Manufacturers, these two organizations have created or we can say organized the Swavalamban Seminar. Swavalamban means self reliance. So, what would be the objective? The objective is to create the uh, defense technologies indigenously, okay, and to provide a platform for the stakeholders so that they can discuss the uh, plan of action for having more and more indigenous technologies into the defense sector. That is the basic idea behind organizing the Swabalamban seminar. Now during the seminar, the Prime Minister of India had launched the Spring Challenge. Now what is it? It is nothing but an initiative under which the defense technologies will be developed in India. So indigenous defense technologies would be developed under the Spring Challenge. That is the basic idea of this initiative. Now West Sprint also has a full form and the full form is supporting pole vaulting in R&D that is research and development through IDEX, NLIO and TDA. Okay. So the words which are highlighted here. Supporting pole vaulting in R&D through IDEX, NIO and TDA. These are the keywords. If you remember the keywords, you can obviously put the connectors in between and then the full form of sprint is ready for all of you. Okay. So in this manner, try to remember this long and a little bit of beard full form. Okay. Now what is the uh, purpose of sprint? If you remember that, you would be easily able to remember the full form as well. Sprint aims to pole vault to basically uh, accelerate the pace of R&D research and development through Three organizations. First is IDEX, that is uh, Innovations for Defense Excellence. Second is Naval Innovation and Indigenous Organization. And third one is TDAC, which is Technology Development Acceleration Center. Okay, so in this manner, it would be easier for you to memorize. 
Now, one more announcement was made by this Naval Innovation and Indigenous Organization that is, it is going to implement or include 75 new indigenous technologies or products into the Navy, into the Indian defense sector, okay, in the wake of Azadika with MOTS, okay, and this is going to be done with the help of Defense Innovation Organization. Now, this Defense Organ Innovation Organization, guys, is a Section 8 company, basically an NPO, Section 8 of the company, which basically works to register the NPOs or NGOs, etc. So, organizations which work for not profit, uh, which uh, work for welfare, okay. So, Defense Innovation Organization is a Section 8 company and it funds this innovation for defense uh, excellence okay so this platform is funded by this organization and this organization and NIIO are going to introduce 75 new technologies now more about the naval innovation and indigenization organization because it is a very recent organization in 2020 only it was launched to foster innovation and self-reliance in defense forces and it is a three-tiered organization one is the Naval Technology Acceleration Council, which is basically going to uh, introduce the technologies, okay? Working group under NTAC, which will work for implementing the project that are approved by this Naval Technology Acceleration Council. And Technology Development Acceleration Cell is basically going to work on the R&D related to technologies, okay? Now let's move on to the next question. With which country's central bank has RBI signed an MOU for cooperation across different fields? So here, Indonesia guys will be Titans. Now, what is the basic crux? The basic crux of this uh, news is that Indonesia and RBI, both of them have signed an MOU and this MOU was signed during the G20 Finance Minister and Central Bank Governors Meeting. And it was the third meeting that took place in Bali, Indonesia. Okay, so during this meeting, this MOU was signed. And the basic idea behind this MOU is to increase the cooperation across different sectors. For example, digital payment, increasing the functioning of the central bank. Okay, basically strengthening the functioning of central bank in the respective countries. And also they are going to work for the anti-money laundering activities, against the anti-money laundering activities, okay. So that is all about this news. Now this one is the most important news of the day, so do listen to me very carefully. According to RBS, fifth round of the remittances survey for 2020 to 2021, advanced economies like US, UK, Singapore emerged as important sources for the country for remittances accounting for dash percent of the total payments in 2020 to 2021. So here guys, the right answer is option B, 36%. Now I know that you are not able to understand what this news all about. Let me tell you. So RBI has basically conducted this fifth round of remittances survey for FY21. The basic purpose is to assess the remittance inflows in it and the sources of it. Okay, so this survey has observed that from the Gulf nation, the remittances that India used to have, the inflows have reduced, have declined. And the decline is guys from 50% to 30%. So this is a really major decline that uh, Indian remittance inflow has faced from the Gulf nation. And now, in opposition to the Gulf countries, we have the advanced economies like US, UK, Singapore. From there, the remittances have increased now accounting for 36% of the remittances in total in FY21. Now, the major reason of this decline and this increase I'm going to teach you in this report. So, let's delve into the report. But guys, this is the crux. I hope that you are clear with the basics. And now, I'm moving into the details. So guys, this is the fifth round. Fourth round was conducted in 2016-17. to 17. All these are mere facts that you need to remember. So I have already told you that the share of remittances inflows from the GCP region, the Gulf region has reduced. Now, why has it reduced? There are two major reasons for that. 
Now remember that we are talking about F by twenty one, which is the COVID year. Okay, so here the two reasons are first is the slow migration. Okay, because of the lockdowns, because of the travel curves, migration was stopped. Second main reason is cited as the informal sector. Most of the workers who work in the Gulf region, the Indian workers, I'm talking about, guys. Most of them work in the informal sector, which was the hardest hit, which was the sector which got hardest hit due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, and that is why they were not in a position to earn well and send the money back to their country to their family. That is why the remittances from the Gulf region have reduced. Now, why has that increased from the advanced economies? Because the workers of India who are working in the advanced economies, they are probably in the more formal sector okay and the formal sector was not as uh, hardly hit by the pandemic as the informal sector right so that is the reason now guys i have already told you the fact that the reduction of the percentage the share of the gulf countries is from 50 percent to 30 percent now and advanced economies stand at 36 percent the total remittances in closing so here you can see country line. For example, US share in India's remittance in close has increased. You can clearly see the share. As well as UAE's. Now UAE, uh, UAE's share has decreased and the decrease is very significant. And similarly you can see for the countries. Now the question that should be in your mind that do you need to remember all of that? No. Don't try to mark up this data and you won't be able to do that okay now here guys you have been given the percentage of people in the share of overseas indians in these countries and the remittance that they have sent for example in us approximately 14 percent of the total indian migrants reside in us and that population has sent 23.4 percent of total remittances that india has received in fy20 okay then in UAE says 10.7% of the total Indian migrants that were residing in different countries across the globe. Out of those 100%, 10.7% resided in UAE and they sent 18% of uh, remittances, okay, total remittances in close out of the total, 18% was sent from UAE. Now the largest came from US, the second largest came from UAE, so that much is enough to remember. Okay. Now, guys, if you compare the data state wise, which state received the highest remittance, then you would see that Kerala and the south southern states are some of the states that are known for their, uh, we can say, the migration that the people do to other countries for uh, eminent work as well as the remittance that these states receive. So, Kerala used to be one of the states which received highest remittances till 2016 to 17 but in the covid year the remittances of kerala uh, had fallen and maharashtra has taken the first position okay so the share of remittances that maharashtra hold out of the total remittances is 35.2 percent and it is the highest in india then we have kerala Tamil Nadu, delhi Karnataka, Pradesh. okay so you can just remember the top three that will suffice your uh, preparation. Now guys, this is the total remittance that India received in 2020, 83.5, 1.5 uh, US billion, uh, US dollar billion. So I have already told you the reasons for the decline of remittances from the Gulf regions, so there's of migration from India to the Gulf regions people in the informal sector and reduced income levels okay even though the people the minuscule amount of people who were in the formal sector their income had also fallen so the overall uh, burden on the income level had increased during fy 21 and this is the primary reason for which the small size remittances increased in it, okay so suppose prior to the FY21 prior to the COVID pandemic, if India used to receive $100 worth of remittance from one person, now this amount has fallen to say 50 
dollars. Okay, and this decrease is due to the high pressure on the income level. So these were some of the reasons. Now, guys, this is one of the most important part. Do this according to SDG 10.C. Okay, SDG 10 states to reduce the inequality among countries and within the countries. Okay, so SDG 10.C says that the remittance cost, the cost of remittance should be less than 3% by 2030. All the channels, okay, all the remittance corridors which have cost higher than 5% by will be eliminated by 2030. And guys, this is a very important fact. This can be directly asked in your examination. So do remember the standard uh, or the goal that SDG has set for the remittance cost. The remittance cost is nothing but the cost that is uh, acquired for that is incurred for transferring the money from one country to the another country. Like the fees charged by the bank, the conversion of the currency into the home currency. So these are some of the costs that the sender has to bear for sending money to the home country. So that is the remittance. Now the next question is five higher. Uh, has become the one zero uh, hundred and fifty unicorn of India, which sector does the startup operating? So here the right answer is blockchain. This five five is a blockchain platform, and it has become the one zero hundred and fifth unicorn of India, and written unicorn was what, which is the credit card firm. Okay. Which country's central bank has fined Binance of 3.3 million euros in July 2022? So here, Netherlands is the right answer. And why was this crypto exchange, uh, crypto exchange fine? The reason is that it did not register itself into the country and started operations. That's why it got fined. Now, what are the facts that can be asked in the examination? First is the question that I have made for you. Second is the headquarters of Binance. Okay. And the finance is the largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world in terms of the trading volume on a daily basis. Okay, so that is also an important fact for all of you to know. Who has been appointed as the MD and CEO of NSD National Stock Exchange, the largest exchange of India? Ashish Kumar Chauhan. So he is the first. Where is the National Research Center for Banana located? So here, guys, the right answer is Peruchi. Now, why is it in the news? Because the Indian Council of Agriculture Research celebrated its 94th Foundation Day and during that celebration, it gave awards. So this is one of the organizations that received the award. So this National Research Center for Banana was given the Sardar Patel Outstanding I got institution award for the year 2020 under the idea of small institutes. Now one more uh, important information regarding this institution is that it is maintaining Asia's largest field gene bank with 374 indigenous and 124 exotic varieties along with in vitro, in vitro and cryogene banks and this this fact is very important. So do remember this fact about this national research center of Canada. Next award is given to the Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute located in Kochi. So it has received two awards basically. First award was given to it to the organization for the best annual report. Okay, in the category of best annual uh, report award. Okay, and second award was given to a scholar from this institution, which is Anushri M. Okay, and he's a, a PhD scholar who has got this. Award from IPAD. Third award is given to the National Academy of Agricultural Research Management uh, and the award name is Sardar Patel Outstanding IPAD Award for the year 2021 in the large institute category. That Banana Institute got it in the small institute category and this has got it in the large institute Then, Rabindu Nekar. Who is a farmer from Maharashtra, particularly from the Amravati district? So he has got the Babu Jivan Ram Abhinav Kisan Award 
for innovative experiments in farming to be members in the as well as our camp. Then we have National Pomegranate Research Institute at Solapur and it has got the award Fasan Kaum as a prize for the year 2021. Now I have already told you that this Haikal has celebrated its foundation day which is the 94th and the celebration was uh, done on July 16. This institution was established on July 16, 1929. So these dates are important. Moving to the last question, which spot does Cameron Smith belong to? So here, golf is the right. So he has won the uh, the Open Championship, which is a golf championship, and he is from Australia. So here, guys, I would like to end this session. Thank you so much for watching.